Hi, I'm Paul Marcel. In my Angle Madness project, I'm going to be doing some wire inlay. And for that, I need a couple accessories built for my inlay router. This is a router that I got from William Ng School of Woodworking. I haven't gone there. I just bought it through their store. What this is is a modified version of the Stuart McDonald inlay router base. So they're extremely similar. There's uh, only some, some minor, minor differences. So pretty much pick the one of the two that you that's most convenient for you to get. Now the base uses a Fordham handpiece. That's what it's holding and capturing here. And then of course you connect that up to your Fordham that's hanging behind me. So this really works out well for doing some very precise inlay work where you can hang on to these two here and you got a very small bit, you know, as small as like 16th of an inch. Uh, there's also a 32nd of an inch one hiding around here somewhere. So you can do some very fine, fine work. Now, a problem with this is this is great if you're doing some freehand routing. The problem is I need a curve in this case here. I'm following a patterned curve for making a small kind of escape hatch in the back of my entertainment center so that I can stow wires. So the problem is I can't follow a pattern with this. Now there is an accessory for this router that comes from Stuart McDonald. And what it does is it attaches to this base using the two threaded holes here. Now the two inside holes are the ones that come with the base. The two outside holes here, those are some that I did for a separate jig that we'll talk about in another episode. So this one here would simply attach to the bottom like so. And what it does is it allows you to add basically an offset from something that you're following to where the router bit is located. Now that would sound an awful lot like a router bushing or guide that we would use for following a pattern, but the problem is that this follower here is much too long. When you consider the length of this bit, I could never get out of the body of the base and then beyond this very far before I would have to do my work. The other problem is that you would have to guide the router exactly perpendicular to the tangent of the pattern. So while it may not make a big difference if you're a little bit off, if you ever had to do something where you had to route twice, that would be very, very important. So what they use this for is Stuart McDonald actually makes a lot of products for luthiers. So this is used by guitar builders for doing inlays around the outer edge of the guitar body. So my solution for this was to create my own little jig that would act like a router guide or a router bushing. Now this simply fits onto the base. So you set it up on the top here, slide it back, and then we'll screw it into place right here. But the problem is, how are we gonna ensure that this is centered? Now, when you're dealing with regular benchtop routers or handheld routers, normally you use a centering mandrel. So it'll be basically a, a big bit that you're gonna put into the router and it has a cone tip on it. And what you do is you lower it down into this, this guide bushing and just by nature of a cone going into the circle, it's gonna center it. And then once that happens, you lock the guide bushing into place. But here, I don't really have that option. I have a collet that's gonna accept at most a quarter inch bit. And I need a larger hole than that in order to get clearance for any of the bits that I'm gonna go through. Because some of these actually have some burr bits and stuff. They're bigger than the actual shank. So I needed a solution for that as well. So I did come up with a good little jig here and the whole thing's pretty easy to do and pretty easy to replicate. So you might find it useful if you have one of these routers. So what I did is I started with a piece of Lexan. Now Lexan is a polycarbonate. You can get this at any of the big box stores. Uh, it routes in machines very, very nicely. It doesn't seem to melt nearly as quickly as say uh, acrylic and acrylic tends to be really shattery and brittle. So I took a simple measurement. If we were to take a look at the bottom of the base, it would be basically from this corner to up here. I found the center of that blank and then I drilled the hole that was three quarters of an inch in diameter and almost all the way through the piece of polycarbonate. And the reason for that is I wanted to set a three quarter inch diameter nylon spacer that you can get also at the big box stores. So I simply set that into that recess. Now this spacer is a quarter inch tall. So by the time you have the recess that we put it in, the thickness of this base, you end up having a little over an eighth of an inch that's projecting out, which is just enough to follow a pattern and leave enough room for these little bits to make it out. So then in the center, I also drilled a half inch hole so that I could get this inner diameter and have this thing clear. And then we were ready to figure out where to fit it on this base. And that's where I had to make this centering jig. Now I need to use a centering jig in order to make sure that when I place this on here, even though there are no screws, that it is perfectly centered onto the bit that's in the collet. So then I could drill all the holes and tap them as I needed. But then in use, this is what we're gonna use in order to place this to make sure it's exactly perfect. So what this centering jig is, is I just took a block of maple, I used the three quarter inch Forstner bit to drill a shallow hole into it, one that's deeper than this projection that's here. And then without moving the stick, I swapped the bit for an eighth inch bit 
and drilled a perfectly centered hole on it all the way through. Now the reason I pick an eighth inch is because the collet that I use the most often in this inlay router is one for eighth inch bits. So with that in mind, I would take this eighth inch bit and I would just put it in the collet and go ahead and lock it in. So then the piece of Lexan and, and the guide bushing that's made out of nylon would just be sitting here floating around. You have no way of centering it. So you take this jig, you put that onto the drill bit, and as you're pushing it up, you can place the nylon spacer directly into that three quarter inch hole. Now you've got it perfectly centered. And the other benefit of this, it's very easy to screw down one side or the other a little bit further, and then this ends up being not parallel to the base. So you'll have your bit not perpendicular and it's very difficult to see and it's hard to go and do a test with. But with this block it's really easy because I can push on this block up on the bit and I can take a look and see that it's touching flat all the way on this base. So this is perpendicular to that base. Now earlier I had one of these canted on this and you could see a gap on one side. Unfortunately it was like that when I drew a couple of the holes so I had to make them a little bit bigger. <laughs> so with this in place and I can move this around and it's all perfectly placed I could mark where the one hole I would need near the back is so that I could use one of the existing holes that was uh, threaded. So I simply made a, a large hole on here so that I could go through and thread one of the screws that came actually with this other accessory. I'm just going to reuse those screws so I don't have to go buy myself some new ones. And they turn out that they're number 832s if you're going to go get your own. So then I would just thread this through and lock this one side in place. Now because these screws are so long and actually this is so thin here and you don't want it to project out, it'd be hard getting a screw this size at the store anyway. So I just went ahead and purchased a couple extra nylon spacers here and then I just put a washer on the top so this way here I can screw it right on in and lock it into place. So with that in place, I was able to then mark this other side where I would want the hole. Now there is no hole on the front side here, so I did drill a hole into the aluminum and then I tapped it with an 832 uh, tap. And then I just made a larger hole here, the quarter inch hole, so that I would have room to be able to put the other screw through and lock the whole thing into place. So it's a really easy thing to do with this uh, Lexan. It's going to be something very useful for me because now with this base, I would be able to swap out this bit with one of my inlay bits. And now I could follow a pattern very easily using just a piece of uh, quarter inch MDF that's been shaped. And then I can actually get the projection of the bit far enough down if I were to lower this down further to be able to do the inlay at least for my wire. So simple jig didn't take all that long to do, took longer to explain. So stay tuned for Angle Madness when we inlay 35 feet of this stuff. So now after all this trouble of building this, of course there is another way that you could do this. There's always a thousand ways of doing things. One of the things that Stuart McDonald also sells is an eighth inch collet adapter. So what this is, it's an, it'll hold an eighth inch bit in it and it'll fit into a quarter inch collet that you already have in your router. So with this you can use your regular handheld router, larger one, or maybe you have a smaller trim router that you really like. Now in my case I prefer this inlay router because it's a little bit smaller, nimbler, lighter, and also the variable speed is on a foot pedal. So you can really be concentrating on what you're doing when you're flowing so this is always an option. Now one of the things I thought I'd point out is that this is made out of brass and some people complain that oh it should have been made out of steel for durability. I think it would work better in brass because this will deform. So when it's in that collet, as the collet is pressing in, it's going to bend certain parts of this in order to conform better and it's going to slam it up against the shaft or the shank of your router bit. So you're going to get a much better grip whereas if it was steel you wouldn't really be able to clamp down on it hard enough in order to do that deformity so you're going to get only what you get from this adapter. So I think it actually works better in brass. Now if you don't have a tap and die set, Harbor Freight sells one for a really reasonable price. I bought the SAE and the metric versions and I've been surprised at how many times I end up using it to clean threads from things that come that are kind of crappy or they're not really milled all that well. So it works really well for someone that has light duty like myself. I use that to tap these holes here. So as we get to the wire inlay for Angle Madness, I'll be producing an episode on just wire inlay. It'll be separate from the episode for the project, just so that we can talk about a number of different ways that we can inlay wire that's nice and thin and thicker, and what if you want it to project out and stuff. So I think we're going to have some fun with that one. All right, talk to you later.